Hi everybody, Marijuana Man here. It's August 9th. Mark has uh, started uh, the western leg of his smoke tour and we find him today in Calgary. He's uh, been arrested but he's out now. Can you hear me Mark? I'm, you're, you're fine. How's everything with you? What's happened out there today? Well, we, uh, I, get, I started speaking just before 4 o'clock, and a good crowd was there already, and uh, it eventually swelled to about 60, 70 people. And uh, I gave a number of rousing points. I also pointed out one of the things that was new in this speech, uh, different from the other ones, and we'll see it because I'm FedExing film footage of it. Monday will be there Tuesday, and beyond Tuesday afternoon, I suspect. But was that, you know, we've had fewer marijuana arrests this summer than any other time for three months in the last 35 years. And the bodies aren't piling up, nothing, nobody's been hurt by this. And we've almost had no arrests. I probably represent the largest percentage of possession arrests in the country <laughs> right now because very few people get arrested. You know, 25,000 to 50,000 people smoke marijuana at SARS stock at the concert in Toronto recently. Imagine how much less fun that would have been for half a million people if the cops started arresting all those people for marijuana that and going change. in and started bossing people around about pot. But instead, the police could do nothing, so the police got along with everybody on pot. And I imagine that pot went far into taking the alcohol and sun combination and modifying it a lot so that there were no outbreaks of hostilities in a crowd with so much marijuana available to them. So I think already Canada's changing as a result of legal marijuana. And, and because you can of see you, that in large they're... public gatherings like that. And also they're seeing that uh, marijuana is not a threat to them as they've been told all these years. And I think well, that it, so you I, did you did get arrested today though. Yes, we were Sango Canada at four twenty and I lit up just at the end. In fact the police officers waited until the crowd had finished singing O Canada and then they came in and retrieved the bong, which really doesn't have any a marijuana in it that's any good, so I carry a gram with me at all times, so I was able to give them some fresh marijuana to make sure that I got a court date, and my court date's on September 10th, and it was interesting, the, the, the chief constable there came down and said, you know, you might be right, but we're instructed to arrest you anyway. Is that and right? I thought, I thought that was very interesting, that police are aware there is a, a fairly good likelihood that this is true and that someone should act on this soon, and that they, they are in the meantime probably putting, giving people fewer marijuana possessing citations in this country over the last three months than any other period in, in Canadian history, and I can assure you that's true, since marijuana was really, uh, you know, prosecuted since 1968. Well, wow, that's very encouraging that uh, that change is occurring, and it's good to hear that out of uh, the mouth well, the of, other thing of is, the is authorities. That, and it's, I hope it's not immodest to suggest, but every police officer in every location I go to is increasingly more polite and more deferential. And, I, and I'd like to think that maybe they have some respect for me. And if they have respect for me, someone who is representative of our movement, then maybe they'll have respect more for all of us that are cannabis users. And I think this is a good good effect to engender. That it, it's, all, it's certainly true that I'm well known and that you know I get publicity so the police are on their best behavior. But I think their behavior to all cannabis users will improve as a result of this summer of legalization tour, where they've been able to listen to my arguments and have the media query them and they research these court decisions and I think they're coming to the conclusion that there's plenty of doubt out there as to whether marijuana is an arrestable offense. Well your, your efforts are certainly providing an invaluable service in bringing this uh, issue to the forefront and keeping it generally on the front pages of the paper. Any press uh, in Calgary prior to this? Uh, no. In fact, most of the media said that they didn't even hear about it until too late. I, I did see six or seven of them there. Um, the Edmonton media is much more uh, forewarned. They've already interviewed me on Ched Radio today for an hour. The newspapers in Edmonton have taken uh, more interest in the Calgary papers, and I'm arriving there tomorrow to smoke out the Edmonton Police Service there. So, so, so it um, is, you, you are in Edmonton tomorrow on the August 10th. At 4.20, you're going to be smoking there too. Yeah, I'll be speaking at 4 o'clock in Edmonton and uh, smoking out at 4.20 and we'll see what happens. Edmonton police said they wouldn't arrest me, but, you know, they're not bound to that in any way. So um, we'll see. Well, we'll uh, see if they keep to their word and then where are you off to after that? Well, then there's Prince George on the 14th. I actually go to Regina on the 12th for a court appearance in the morning and then fly back to uh, Vancouver on the 13th to go to Prince George on the 14th. Well, we're, uh, as always, Mark, glad to hear that you're safe and uh, sound in Calgary. And thanks to all the people who showed up there and helped out. 
So we're going and, to Grant Krieger's birthday party now, and there's about 40 to 50 activists there, and I'll be talking to them about running for the Alberta and Canadian Marijuana Party in the next election. Well, good. That's a, another worthy effort there, and happy birthday to Grant. And yeah, that's right. Okay, I guess bye, we'll, Greg. We'll talk to you soon, and thank you all for watching.